Hi, this is Seth Mosley, and we are on the Made It in Music podcast, and I'm here in Franklin, Tennessee at the Full Circle Music Studios with my friend John Marks of Spotify. Good afternoon, morning, evening, whatever time you're hearing, you viewing, never know. listening, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we live in studios all day, as I'm sure you sp- have spent a lot of time in studios. Not like you, but yeah, I'm uh, I'm fortunate enough to be able to uh, spend a few minutes uh, yeah. every once in a while in a dark studio. It's kind of fun. Yeah, and you don't you don't know whether it's morning, night, or afternoon. So <laughs> it is so true. Um, so happy to have you here today, and I've just been so looking forward to this conversation. Not only as just my my own curiosity, I've just got so many questions, um, man, so many questions. But just have have been you know, following your work for a long time and just so appreciate what you're doing at Spotify to champion country music and really just to expand the genre. So first of all, just thank you. Um, I'll say you're welcome, but you know, it's, it's, uh, everybody, a lot of people doing a lot of work and, uh, yeah. uh, I'm one of them love what I do every day. It's what gets me up in the morning. Yeah. Uh, I got a whole team of uh, people doing the same thing. Yeah. So good. So, um, let me go way back in time and then I and then we'll 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 kind of circle back around to nowadays and Spotify and everything that's happening. But I want to zoom way back and, and ask, what was the first moment that you can remember that music impacted your life and you knew that you wanted to pursue it long term? Uh, I know exactly that minute. Um, I was I don't know how old I was. Uh, I was a kid, little kid, child. Uh, and, uh, I was at the YMCA on Saturday afternoon, swim, run in the gym, do all that stuff, um, on the weekends, get out of the house. Uh, and, uh, on the jukebox comes this, dun, 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 dun. Yeah, there you and go. I heard that riff from Oh Pretty Woman. And I said, son of a gun, what is that? <laughs> and... I uh, was hooked on music ever since. I probably was before, but I remember that moment like it was yesterday. Like, oh my God, this is, wow. So it was and, a literal jukebox. And it was a literal jukebox. And uh, it just uh, fueled my interest uh, in music from then to uh, current day. Yeah. And that took you, you know, I, I, I imagine through many paths, but ultimately you ended up in radio. Can you tell me how that moment sort of led up to that? Like, why radio? Why was that the thing? Because I wasn't talented enough to sing, dance, or play an instrument <laughs> or write a song. <laughs> and uh, I realized that early on. Uh, it's like, who doesn't want to play a guitar and, you know, uh, all that stuff, right? I mean, that's just part of being a kid and, you know, want to be a rock and roll star. Everybody wants that little slice of life. But uh, I just realized early on, I didn't have the talent, the stick to the whatever it took to do that. Uh, and so not to say, well, what do I not have to work so hard at? Exactly. It's not that. It's uh, <laughs> But it was, you know, what can I do uh, to be a part of the music industry, even though I can't functionally make music as such. Uh, and it kind of fed into radio kind of organically because I, I got started actually uh, in radio through my high school. So uh, that kind of opened a, a, a door a gateway, so to speak, to, uh, to that uh, world and uh, I haven't looked back. That is awesome. Well, you you obviously have the voice for it. <laughs> so, what what was that journey when you made the decision to 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 jump into radio? Did mm-hmm. you how did you achieve that? How did you land your your you know your first gig doing that? It was uh, got my I will say that it wasn't a job or a gig. It was you know how I got in was uh, my local radio station had a junior achievement company, mm-hmm. uh, and they would hire uh, students. You know, JA. Uh, was about teaching entrepreneurship to children and uh, school age children, and so uh, the uh, I applied for the local radio station, uh, and uh, and we sold, we produced, we wrote, we booked guests, uh, and created a one hour program every week on the local radio station, mm. and uh, we did that week after week until uh, the company disbanded and. Uh, uh, I went and knocked on the door and asked for a job, and they hired me. It was like, uh, I don't know if anybody else uh, asked for a job or not, but I did, and they put me right in. So it's, uh, And so starting at 16, I was making my first paycheck, you know, uh, uh, being on the air uh, at my local radio station. That's a rare thing, and, and that's in 
it was in Cincinnati, Ohio, right? Uh, uh, Cincinnati area, Middletown, okay. Ohio, to be yep. exact. That was my uh, born and raised hometown. And uh, yeah, WPFB in Middletown, Ohio. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm from around. Circleville, so just okay. just down the road from you. <laughs> exactly right. And I believe you you are familiar with the Pumpkin Show. I love the Pumpkin Show. <laughs> I haven't been back in ages. Well, it's a good good excuse. I'll I'll join you going there sometime. I want some pumpkin cheesecake, please. I know exactly. Um, so started in Cincinnati. That that took you all the way out to San Diego. You were at a KSON out there, I believe. Yes, and. Um, 2007, you know, I was a radioed, went to school, college, all that stuff, uh, worked at local radio stations, moved about here, there, and everywhere. Uh, last you know, radio stop on the uh, FM side sure. was KSON in San Diego uh, in 2003, legendary radio station. Uh, one of the first FM, one of the first FM stations, I want to be correct on the stat, or first country stations in the United States. Mm-hmm. Uh, they, they have some distinguishing characteristic. They, they've been on the air since like 1964, mm-hmm. something like that. And so, uh, legendary station, great country music station, and uh, it was uh, it was a great experience. That's awesome. And, and that ultimately led you to Sirius XM, right? You said that was your last stop on the FM circuit. What was, what was that like? Well, it's like, you know, I don't know, it's like I would just say it the way it is. I mean, FM radio wasn't challenging and fun anymore. I wasn't having a lot of fun, and uh, it was a little too repetitive, a little too rote in terms of what you did and how you went about it, and so it just wasn't very challenging and fulfilling. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you know, so we were saying, "Well, we'll just go take a break, and uh, mm-hmm. uh, we we're going to go down to Utah and uh, hang out with the grandkids for a little bit, and you know, catch a little chill time." Uh, and had a random chance encounter uh, at country radio seminar with uh, uh, with someone from Sirius XM, mm. uh, and uh, they said uh, they were telling me, "Oh, they need somebody to look after their country uh, properties, and they have like a twelve channels of all these kind of different uh, music forms that you can be involved with." And I said, "Really? Not just this one thing anymore? I can do." 10 or 11 or more or whatever it is of country music and I love all kinds of it and uh, and so I went right after that so uh, out went the uh, vacation plans and uh, <laughs> and uh, somehow or other I got hired at Sirius XM and uh, moved to Nashville in 2010 to uh, to work with them on their country properties mm. so it sounds like you've just been a fan of country music for a long time you, you mentioned working on kind of you know, one format to being able to have 10 to 12 different things was, is, am I, am I hearing that correctly? Well, it's like I was raised, I was like, raised on country. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, I was, uh, I was raised on country music, uh, mom and dad from Kentucky and, uh, and all of that and country, bluegrass, Southern gospel, black gospel, uh, all of those forms of music from, uh, the rural areas and, and we're in, industrial area where I was raised in Ohio, you know, that was kind of what people listened to. And so, uh, and, and so I I feel like I was able to bring some depth to all of those forms at, uh, at Sirius XM. And so it's always been that way. Uh, but you know, Hey, I was a rock and roller too. I wanted to, I wanted to play guitar like Eric Clapton or Hendrix or whoever it was at the time. And, uh, I, I went through my stuff with that too, but just for some reason or another country was always the tug. And, uh, and even in my college years, I, I focused on developing that and I just kind of looked at it like, well, you know, all these old DJs, you know, like Ralph Emery and, uh, Charlie Douglas and, uh, whoever else was out there at the time. I said, I was looking at them and I was a college kid and I said, those guys have got to go away sometime so I can just slide right in there. Yeah, there you and go. And so, <laughs> so I figured, and, and all the, at the rock and roll radio stations, there were kids my age, you know, uh, having a blast and playing their music. And so I figured, well, you know, I'll age these guys out and, uh, and I'll have me a job that way. So at least I'll be on the air. That's really all I cared about at the time. Yeah. Well, funny enough, and interested to hear your opinion on this, I feel like country has become the place genre wise where the you know the great guitar players live and it's about you know in, in a lot of cases it's, it's about rocking out and like probably the people who would have maybe wound up in rock bands 10 20 years ago like they're in country now because i don't know is that a, is that 
Oh, that's why I'm chuckling. No, it's like, hey, I mean, it's like you just kind of helped me realize, even though I kind of knew it, yeah. you know, uh, underneath us. Yeah, it's like we're back to rock and roll, you yeah. know, in a, in a good way. I mean, it's yeah. like they've taken elements of that and, and brought it into this music and broadened it and widened it. And I, I say hooray to that. And, yeah, yeah, that's awesome. So what was the journey, like, what was the story that, that took you from Sirius to where you're at now at Spotify? It was fantastic. It uh the people there taught me how to approach radio less from a local level, which had been my life. I mean, I'd been serving local market communities and and doing these things uh, from the Kroger market or wherever. Um, and uh, and you know, the experience at SiriusXM over the five years I was there showed me that uh, there's a <laughs> it's a big world yeah. out there. And uh, SiriusXM, uh, you know, is only like, I wouldn't say only, you know, that's a large audience, a large swath of country, the United States and Canada. And it helped me think in a larger purpose, a larger frame mm -hmm. uh, in, in how music is exposed and how it's mm -hmm. brought to listeners and consumers. And it really opened my eyes to that prospect and possibility of reaching a mass market with music and uh, and really never f felt it uh, at the local level as I did uh, at Sirius XM when, when I would have artists coming back to me and say, I don't have any radio airplay and man, they're singing every word to my songs and all this kind of stuff and from Canada and from Wherever'sville, USA, and it was mind blowing to to see and hear these stories, and and it was just fantastic to hear. So it opened my eyes up uh, to all of that, and it was just a great experience to have worked there. Uh, and uh, as as I started moving out, you know, it's like my my father was having health issues, and you know, I was having to go back and forth, and it was easier to. Uh, to to leave and manage that, and uh, you know, stay at Sirius XM and phone it in. So, uh, so I left there to manage that, and uh, Spotify called me uh, not soon after, and uh, and it was one of the more interesting calls I've ever had. You know, because you know, I'd never thought of Spotify at all, and I said, "That's a bunch of." You know, kids and and code writers, you know, on <laughs> on electric skateboards and stuff. You yeah, know, what do yeah. they want me for? You know, uh, and uh, and so we we kind of contemplated that idea for a minute, and uh, they were telling me about what they were looking to do with uh, with their entertainment uh, branding and all that, and it seemed like an interesting and fun challenge, and so uh, so here we are. It's yeah. uh, it's uh, uh, all of those have been just uh, just really fantastic experiences, and Spotify continues to be as well. Yeah, it's huge. So, can you tell me, having having been there for a bit now, why is Spotify so important to the modern music industry? Well, uh, it's very simple. It's just the primary way to get music to your fans. You know, it's like uh, there are still other ways, of course, you know, the, the performing and downloads and all that. But, you know, people are uh, are consuming out of their devices now and uh, Spotify is right there with it. And uh, and I think that's uh, that's the number one reason. So can you talk about, I've heard you say this before, t talk about Spotify as a, like the new retail storefront for artists what do you what do you mean when you say that well you know artists i mean these days and times i think artists it's really one of the best opportunities to be an artist right now uh and moving forward so uh, uh there are so many opportunities now that didn't exist even a couple of years ago for that matter uh and uh, you look at you know the path which is you know find a manager do some demos get a label go on a radio tour, go on tour, you know, and that was a formula that was basically uh, and continues to be intact. Uh, and, uh, but there are other ways now, thanks to digital Spotify uh, and others, but uh, to, to be able to do your own thing. It's like, as a matter of fact, it's a, it's really a goal of Spotify is to have as many artists who are just making a living off of their streaming and building their business and their brand off of that and and being able to own more of your own music and so you know we're all kind of motivated in that same degree and it starts with the uh, artist page because that's kind of the 
uh, the, let's call it the retail outlet for artist X and Y. And uh, on there you can sell merch, have your tour dates, do your own playlists, you know, your songs are there. Uh, and you, it's kind of like directing store traffic. So you bring your fans into your store, let them see what you're doing, make them familiar with uh, the music that you're making that's new and whatever's happening with the band. Uh, and uh, and it's really one primary way to certainly activate your fans and, and with Spotify at the same time. I just want to reiterate that again, because I think a lot of artists don't even realize how power of a tool they have at their fingertips for, for selling merch, for uh, going on tour and promoting their shows. And it seems like it's working. Well, it's it's uh, one of those direct to the consumer ideas, right? You know, it's like you can go and say, hey, you know, come to our place. You're right at home uh, and create awareness build that bond between listener, uh, fan, uh, band, artist, singer, whoever it is. And, uh, and it's probably today, it's the most efficient way, you know, it's like, uh, you have, a uh, at your availability, uh, when I say you're the artist, uh, you have a worldwide audience at your disposal. You know, all you need to do is get creative and find ways to be able to tap into that. Mm. And uh, it's uh, it's <laughs> it's massive potential uh, that that when people I would trust start thinking about it, that you know, it's like wherever a band's or artist appeal is right now, coming from North Carolina or whatever, choose a state. That well, that's just the beginning. That's just the pinpoint on on a global backdrop that you can create for yourself. Mm. And are you seeing artists take advantage of the platform and the analytics that they get from a standpoint of you know, let's say Raleigh, North Carolina is popping up big time as a Spotify consumption base. Are they going and doing a tour date there, or or doing a, an acoustic show or something f for the fans in those markets, or? How is that working? Uh, short answer is yes. You know, it's like uh, uh, we've had a lot of people who say, yeah, I just plan my tour dates around, you know, the, the Spotify hotspots. And uh, uh, it's it's good thinking, I think. You know, there are, you know, there are the typical large cities that have the large populations. But uh, when you get into below that top three or four, you can start saying, hey, I've got some hotspots in these cities and can develop out from here. And when you when you look at that, way of of developing artistry you know it, it kind of harkens back uh to uh you know you're not old enough but it's like back in the days in the 50s and 60s where that's what you did you know it's like you you took the box of 45s and looked for a radio antenna and stopped by and uh, gave the uh, gave the disc away and tried to get it played and i think it's in a in a sense it's kind of like that now just in a more high-tech way yeah that's you know it's, it just wasn't a random stop at a at a radio station but you can be more uh, designing and how you're going to approach uh, your 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 things like uh, tour building and building your base and building out from certain strong markets. It's it's really a, a great tool if people choose to utilize it. That's good. So we get questions from artists all the time asking about how they can best take advantage and 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 make the most of the Spotify platform. So I want to dive into some some specifics under that if you're if you're cool to. Sure. Um, the first thing. I mean, can you just speak to maybe making great music? Is that <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, that's uh, that's the number one rule? Yeah, I mean, it's like, uh, and of course, you know, everyone you know thinks you know their song is great, you know, so there is not a darn thing wrong with that. Uh, but uh, but it's really in the it's, it's the court of public opinion who uh, who I serve and most everyone at Spotify serves. It's it doesn't matter uh, at the end of the day what I think uh, or what the artist thinks. In many respects, you know, it's going to what's the consumer going to think when it gets to them when it gets to their ears and uh, and whatever your definition is or my definition is isn't doesn't really matter that much it's whatever they think and uh, and it's uh, it's always interesting to to see how all that formulates out to, uh, it, in Spotify's data and uh, and whatever that proverbial great song is just make it that's good. Scotty, it all starts with a song. <laughs> it I think all starts with the song. Yeah, absolutely. I think so many people get caught up in the marketing and the algorithms and all this stuff and kind of a lot of times forget to make great music. So I'm I'm I think you're right. Glad that you're you're uh, in agreement there. Um, the other thing that I've heard you say is to to put your music everywhere. Yes. Can you talk a little bit about that? Well, you know, we're in a a time of, you know, global consumption, real time everything. Uh, and 
it's no different for an artist today, you know, and, uh, and hey, you know, going back to proverbial North Carolina, it doesn't matter if your home base is North Carolina and that's where you know, you're playing in a couple of bars right now. Uh, you know, there's a worldwide uh, marketplace that's uh, waiting to hear your music. Uh, you need to be cognizant. Uh, all artists need to be cognizant of that case and not regionalize your music and make it available worldwide. Be ubiquitous. Be everywhere uh, any uh, body can search for you it would be wherever it is uh, Spotify you know other digital providers other video digital providers you know wherever you know, wherever wherever the music can be played is where you ought to be mm. as an That's artist good. or seen yeah seen heard whatever thought about <laughs> yes <laughs> anywhere yes. you can be yeah I love it so Let's talk about social media. What what role should that play in, well, in as it relates to Spotify and promoting Spotify, but also just in the larger uh, music business for an artist in general? It's the most essential ingredient ever. Mm. And that is all there is to it. Uh, and all of those methods will ebb and flow. You know, it's this week is platform A, it'll be platform B. But... That's how people get the word about your music, too, about where it is at Spotify. Uh, it is all through social media. It's where you can sell, especially as a fledgling artist and you know, uh, an arena artist, a stadium artist, sell tickets. Uh, all of those things are, are probably uh, more possible now thanks to social media. I mean, you know, nobody's watching uh, I, should, oh, I shouldn't say nobody. There's still plenty of people yeah. watching wired TV, cable sure. TV. I'm still one of them. <laughs> uh, uh, and uh, but you know, it's like those those TV commercials don't sell tickets anymore. Mm. Sorry, TV. Yeah. Uh, or any other commercials and other traditional medias. You know, I'll, I'll just cover all the bases. It's yeah. uh, it's it's uh, about fans communicating with fans. It comes through the social media. It comes through Spotify. It comes through the artist page. All that is is kind of a feedback mechanism to uh, to go back and forth. Hey, we just uh, we just recorded a track, uh, an acoustic track. You know, from our new album, go check it out. And uh, Instagram over to Spotify, check it out. Come back and say, hey, you know, it's it's a it's a good way to not only provide feedback but awareness and consumption, which is the ultimate objective. Yeah, that's great. So, artists should be using their social media platforms to drive consumption on on platforms like Spotify. Correct? Is that what? What are some best practices? Like, what are some things that you see working? The artists are doing to get people, you know, to Spotify from social media. Uh, it is three fundamental premises: save, yeah. share, follow. Mm. You know, it's like, hey, uh, fans, save me, uh, save me to your personal playlists. Save my song, uh, save my EP, whatever, uh, to your personal playlist. Share my music with your friends. Mm. Uh, follow me as an artist. And uh, and those three things, in creative, fun, and interesting ways, uh, uh, can build following, build consumption, uh, all on Spotify through the socials. And uh, there are plenty of other people who have better ideas that specialize in that. But uh, but when I'm talking about you know basic one on one kind of stuff, that's uh, that's where you start. Yeah. So save, share, follow. SSF. That's there easy to remember. I love it. That's, <laughs> that's great. all you got to do. Great tip. That's I, it. That's everything. Well, I think that's I think that's really helpful because a yeah. lot of people just think of posting their whatever the smart URL or the link to the music, but don't mm -hmm. necessarily think, okay, what if I created a social post that encouraged people not necessarily to follow or save this song, but like just follow my page in general. Uh, absolutely right, and absolutely. So you're following the artist uh, really helps to. Um, it's not everything, but it uh, leads into algorithmic, uh, you know, choices uh, for release radar, discover weekly, all those things. So there are a lot of other areas be beyond a fan punching a button on a song. It also feeds into algorithms inside Spotify that gets you mm -hmm. uh, outside of genre uh, consideration and play, uh, and also the algorithmic driven playlists in general. It's mm, good. Can you talk a little bit about um, maybe vertical videos? Uh, how, how important are they on the platform? And are there any new developments that artists should be kind of aware of? 
the vertical videos have been really popular and well responded to i'm happy to say i was a little nervous about it because any kind of change like that is uh, to a listening experience is is pretty dramatic uh, and but it's been uh, responded to uh, very positively, and uh, we're getting more uh, requests for submissions than we ever have. Uh, and it's it's turned into a very popular uh, and essential ingredient, you know, in particular on the Hot Country playlist. And uh, we're also uh, doing it on New Boots and looking for ways to expand it. So uh, it's done very well. Uh, it was a format when we started early on that people were wondering about, uh, and uh, and now. It's been uh, adopted as more of a, con- a conventional technique, you know. It's like uh, uh, Instagram now, and uh, and I even see television uh, commercials. What little I see of it, you know, sometimes in vertical. So it's becoming more of a uh, a utilized thing, and and it's really for Spotify because you know when you listen to your music, you're listening on your phone, and it's a vertical experience, and so the verti- uh, the video. Uh, should be the same thing, and that's kind of what drive uh, drove Spotify to that decision, uh, rightfully so. Uh, and uh, and so uh, it, it's it's designed to be more of a one on one experience as opposed to a widescreen. Uh, bigger than life experience it's about you know let me look at seth uh, one-on-one close up let me see what uh, what he looks like what he sounds like you know and and uh and those i think are the ones right now that are that are responding uh the best and it's uh, and it's more like hey you're you're you're, you're um facetiming a friend mm. and as far as artists creating them i mean is it the type of thing that you kind of want to see what songs work and gain traction or is that something artists should be proactive about on the front end uh yes to both i think you know it, it depends on where you are in the spectrum you know it's like if you're if you're a struggling artist and and trying to make ends meet you know and say hey what about a vertical um i'll, I'll suggest uh that they uh you know that they wait on an expenditure until we see if there's something in the song, mm. and if there is, then maybe it's worth. You know, it's it's a business decision they have to make. But after seeing that there's some possibility there, then we can come back to them and say maybe it's worth considering a video. Yeah. Uh, and and I don't want to ever send somebody out like that sure. where uh, where it's not likely to work. Uh, but you know, a lot of times we will get uh, vertical videos with the songs. So mm. uh, some people want to do it that way. Uh, others want to do the song and then release the video a little later. Uh, it's it's kind of like uh, how it works in in regular video right now. But but I like having as as much as possible, like having the videos together. Mm. I think it just creates impact. Uh, but uh, meaning, but sometimes meaning when they send the song <clears throat> to send it with. Uh, perhaps, video? yeah. I'm, I'm only saying perhaps there. Sure. Uh, in in I'll say in close proximity, you know. But uh, but you know, I think there's uh, but you know, sometimes licensing and other uh, things get in the way of that. So it's just sometimes it's not a practical idea. But mm. uh, but I like having them in. You know, it's like uh, in in the high impact areas. I like having them together. I think it, it just makes more noise. Sure, that's good. Yeah. And I've heard that there is a. Maybe a new thing, perhaps in the works. Something canvas is that the is that the new tool? Uh, yes, you're informed, sir. Hey, <laughs> can keep my ear to the ground just, on these uh, things. But canvas is in beta right now, and uh, it's an it's an interesting idea, uh, and it it kind of goes into Spotify's idea of of artists controlling you know their lives, their businesses, their uh, their consumption and whatever, uh, and it's these uh, eight second little gifts that the artists can post and attach to their music, and so uh, you can have one or you can have several, I guess. Uh, it's in beta right now, uh, and uh, it's not uh, in massive uh, production, but I figure it will be at some point in time where an artist can go to their uh, artist page at artist.spotify.com and uh, upload a GIF onto their current song, and it's there. Uh, you know, it's uh, they can do it, they can control it, they can change it as often as they want or Never, uh, and uh, so it gives them an element of control uh, on on the music that they're putting out. Mm. It's good. More I love elements it. Well, of control. We'll, we'll, we'll look forward to uh, hearing and seeing more about that as it progresses and picks up on the platform. Likewise, um, as we're kind of rounding off the conversation, what are what are a few things that you see artists maybe doing wrong when trying to 
you know, grow on Spotify? Are there any, you know, we talk about best practices. Are there any don't do these things that you've seen? Well, you know, it's like I, I want to have T-shirts made, and it's just like it's 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 more of an inside joke uh, industry. It's like playlisting is not uh, a plan, uh, and uh, and so that's that's the thing. I, and uh, and I get it. <laughs> playlisting is turbo fuel, you know, to a song. Uh, I understand, you know, but. You know, not everything, uh, life itself does not uh, rest on getting playlisted. And and I think that's the, the thing people need to, uh, in broad general terms, understand that, you know, because I, I hear it all the time, if I could only get on the playlist. And I said, well, that's that's just one element of, of many, many things <laughs> that have to occur uh, in order for you to develop as an artist. And uh, and there may be several things in place that, that haven't been looked at yet. And so uh, I, I think that, uh, you know, kind of going back to, you know, recording that great music and, you know, having some social presence and all of those kind of things, people need to understand that they, you know, they need to have a bit of a process in, in the brand that they're building uh, as an artist, uh, who they are. Uh, and all of these things, uh, and then it, uh, and then when all that comes together, and then you record that great music, then perhaps you're ready for playlisting. But uh, but I think that's the one misnomer. And you know, it's like getting played on massive radio stations, right? So I understand it, but uh, yeah, it's like not everybody's ready for that. You know, at perhaps a moment they may think they are. Mm. Yeah, and, that, and those, and that's a tough conversation. It uh, is. Yeah. So. Should artists be, and this is this is a little bit of a sidebar, but just one I'm I'm interested to know, and I'm sure a lot of other people are as well too. Should artists be using the Spotify ad platform to promote their music? Um, as a company man, I'll say yes. You know, <laughs> it's like, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I, you know, it's like, uh, and uh, in truth, I, I really. Uh, that is not an area of my expertise, uh, so I can't speak to it. I know many people who have used it with some degrees of satisfaction, uh, but beyond that, you know, I don't know. Mm. That's a good, that's a good fair answer, very fair answer. <laughs> um, what about are there people that are nowadays using this as using Spotify as a research tool in terms of just you know putting songs up, seeing how different ones react? Mm -hmm. Is that a, is that happening, and is that a good idea? It has happened. Uh, it happens with varying degrees of regularity from time to time. Um, uh, so yes, I encourage it. Actually, uh, I think it depends on do you really want to know the answer to the question, <laughs> and so. You know, sometimes people want and some people say they do and they don't really. So I think it just depends on and I think a lot of people uh, don't want to roll the dice and they just kind of have their faith in their music and proceed forward, uh, which uh, uh, I'm appreciative of. But uh, but yeah, it's uh, it, it can be a mixed blessing. So uh, but uh, but I always say, you know, let's give it a try and uh, let's do some stealth uh, uh, work on the song, put it in, see how it works uh, and put our heads together on, you know, what happened and didn't happen. You know, from a data perspective, uh, I encourage it from uh, from anyone who wants to give it a whirl within reason, of course. You know, sure. uh, labels have done it. You know, a lot of independent artists have done it. Um, and uh, getting ready to embark on a uh, on an interesting thing uh, with an artist uh, over the next month or so, two months, uh, where we're going to research like four or five songs, I won't go into detail, uh, and put them in similar scenarios and see which of the five do the best out of all five. So it's like you're getting people who are creative about it and really want to use it as a tool, others who may or may not want to. So it's it's an interesting mix. Mm. That's that's fascinating. And I would have to imagine that, you know, I mean, we're making decisions more based off of data than just gut reactions or gut gut decisions which i guess there's probably good and bad to that but can you talk about what are you know what are some of the data points that people not, might not be aware of like how 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 do we know if a song's working or not working we have some internal figures that we look at but uh things that most people can see are you know skips uh complete ratio 
uh, saves. You know, those are fairly easy to see, probably, <clears throat> if not on the artist page in the uh, you know, artist, uh, you know, the artist page. Sure. Uh, so you can kind of see those stats, and we have a couple of other things that we look at, and uh, and there are about you know, among others, about five things like that. You know, that uh, that we'll see to, you know, to look at the reactivity of the song. Passion sure. uh, is uh, is like lean for it. Are you really le- leaning into the song, or are you not? Uh, so we're we're able to look at those things through our data internally. But skips are also a big part of it. Complete ratio saves uh, indicates passion. Those are those are some primary indicators right there. Mm, that's that's fascinating. Um, I don't want to dwell on it terribly long, but I do feel like it's important to address purely you know, a little bit from selfish motivation. I I am married to a woman. I have two daughters. I am so passionate about helping empower women in the music business. um, As I know you are too. Can you Mm -hmm. speak to maybe some of the ongoing just frustrations, I I guess is the best way to say it, right? With, with women trying to break in to the country format in, in particular. You know, it's uh, it, <laughs> there is no denying it's uh, it's a question. It's a uh, uh, it's a, it needs a solution. Uh, if uh, anybody has one, raise their hand. Uh, it's uh, it, it's one of those things where it, it's a it's a question without one right now. I think that you know there's uh, certainly at Spotify and in the country space in general. You know, we we get out front of uh, uh, of female talent. Uh, I'd probably have to say better than anyone out there right now. Uh, and if there's somebody better, I'd happily accept that. You know, that would be fantastic. Sure, yeah. uh, you know, and uh, and so if I don't know about it, then, hey, let me know and we'll be partners. But uh, sure. the uh, but but it's it, it's really it's how can we unlock that combination, whatever that combination is uh, for for the female talent out there? Uh, you know, if I had the answer, I'd be talking to you right now for my private island. Sure, you know, but it's like, <laughs> but here we are. Sure, uh, but uh, but it's a it's a fascinating question. Uh, all we can do uh, as music people and editorial people right now is to find talent that's uh, worth exposing, give them an opportunity to be heard, and let the consumers decide. It's great, and at the end of the day, yeah, you know, as a taste maker or a curator you you can't yeah you can never dictate those things yeah you can't yeah exactly you can't tell what uh, people are going to like or not like uh, it's like and uh, um you know it's uh it, it is a it is a bit of a dilemma you know and uh, and you know all all i do is hope that you know somewhere along the line and we're beginning to see some of that we're going to start seeing uh some females who are in the uh, in, in in kind of an undiscovered category, hopefully start bubbling up to the top, and uh, and you know somebody will crack the code. It's good. So as we're rounding out the conversation, before we get into our lightning round, I just want to do a little bit of future casting, and and you can you can decline to answer this question if you want, but it's 2025. What does Spotify look like? What does the future of Spotify look like? Um. Let me get Daniel Eck on the phone, please. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Daniel, uh, brother, uh, it's going to be, I think it's going to be, uh, and it's already happening that way. It's going to be, uh, it's going to be the, it's not going to be Netflix, but it will, we'll have plenty of, uh, of video content. Mm-hmm. You know, we want to be as Spotify, uh, let's call it uh, an audio provider, a number one audio provider. You know, with podcasts, that's that's a big priority for us in mm-hmm. in 2019 and beyond. Uh, and and I think Spotify is going to look just like that. Going to be uh, a massive audio provider in uh, in maybe ways that uh, I can't even contemplate right now. Mm. And uh, I think the videos are going to play a continued role on that. And and uh, but. I don't know if we'll go into series TV or not. You know, that's a Daniel question. So right, <laughs> right, exactly. But uh, I'm not sure what the plans are there. But, you know, video will continue to be uh, a part of that as well. But, uh, you know, we're making a serious push into all things audio. I love it. Love it. Well, uh, are you ready for the lightning round? Lightning round. First question, is there a song that has done well on Spotify that maybe surprised you? 
Yes, I think in a uh, in a number of different ways. Uh, uh, over the years, uh, I've I've been known to frequent the Palm Restaurant in Nashville, Tennessee, right across from the Bridgestone Arena. For those not in town, yeah. uh, I'm very much a regular there. Have been, always will be. Um, over my years at the Palm, uh, server, uh, friend uh, would wait on us over the years. And one day on my way out, palms me a CD. <laughs> and um, uh, I have known this guy, uh, a gentleman, Austin Burke, for a few years. I never whispered a word about you know uh, him being an artist. And one day he sits me over with a CD. And uh, he's got this song he's getting ready to release called Sleeping Around. And I said, hmm, all right, played it. It's not bad. It's all right. You know? Yeah. Okay. I'll give the kid a shot. You know? I was like, we'll see what happens. You know? I was like, and wasn't expecting anything. And son of a gun, if that song doesn't have, it's got millions of streams. Yeah. I don't know what the count is. It's yeah. a look it up. Sleeping yeah. Around by Austin Burke. And uh, uh, it's uh, it has, uh, he followed it up with a song called Woke Up in Love that also killed it on Spotify. Mm. And, uh and it's uh, you know gotten his uh, touring and uh, record label prospects and all those things uh, in higher gear. So uh, so that one surprised me in a very great way and a fun way and a happy way. Well, that's great to hear that it's worked well for him. Yes, awesome. So second question: Do you have a top goal for this next year? Yes, I want to see the international consumption of country music outside of the United States and Canada to continue to grow. It is increasing in popularity uh, in unexpected markets like Germany, the Nordics, other places of the world. Uh, it's up 17% this year. I want to do more next year. It's important to get country music out to the world. It's perceived as a U.S. product and needs to be perceived as a global one. And that's my primary objective. I love it. Good goal. Uh, third question. Favorite city that working in music has taken you to anywhere in the world? <laughs> oh my favorite city. Okay. I Yes. Sydney, Australia. Uh, Sydney was one of the most jaw-dropping, eye-opening, beautiful cities I've ever seen. And I haven't been out much, uh, but Sydney, Australia, you know, I would lo I would move there <laughs> in a second. It's nice there, yeah. I'd move there in a second. <laughs> so nice. I love it. Um, <laughs> Not okay. this second. Yes, exactly. So at some point in the future, maybe. We'll see. Um, the next question, are you allowed to have a favorite artist? You know, uh, I don't allow myself. But, you know, there are some obvious favorites that, you know, I will or won't mention. But it's yeah. like, uh, <laughs> but, I, but the God's honest truth cross my heart. You know, I'm emotionally, anybody you see on my playlists and country playlists and Spotify, uh, I'm emotionally invested in. Mm. I want to see all of them do well. I know what a place uh, in those playlists mean, and I take it as seriously as they do. And my only objective is to see all of them be successful. Mm. That's good. That, that is a good answer. Um, and then last question. What was the first concert that you ever went to? <laughs> this is really going to set me back. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, sure, why not? It was Dayton's Hera Arena. Uh, I didn't drive yet. My father had to drive us to and from the uh, concert, me and a friend. Uh, it was, look them up. I guess they're still out there somewhere. Haystacks Balboa mm. was the children of heaven. You know, something or other. They had a song out back then. It was on album radio. Rod Stewart and the Faces when Ronnie Wood still played guitar for the Small Faces. And Eric Burden and War was the headliner. Spill mm. the Wine, when they had Spill the Wine. That was before the War's solo yeah. stuff. Awesome. There you go. Hey, I love it. I love it. So as we're <laughs> as we're closing out, I know I know a lot of people, um, you know, you're you're a busy man, you're you know, helping to curate really a lot of a lot of the future of country music and and a lot of people I'm sure are, you know, just begging to to be able to get a coffee with you. But obviously that's not gonna be the case for for a lot of people out there, especially people just starting out. Um what is the best way 
that you can suggest, you know, artists uh, to get noticed, to get heard, whether it's by you, whether it's by right. any other any of the other curators? It's really uh, simple and true is, uh, again, through the artist page is the new music submission system that Spotify has instituted. You know, it's uh, probably the most democratic way possible uh, to get your music in the hands of all the music editors and, and curators that are out there. Uh, everyone can see it. Uh, everyone can listen to it. Uh, it's all in one place. So it's nice and neat and eliminates the need for phone calls and other things. Uh, and, you know, how uh, an artist fills out that form is going to be directly proportional to who it gets in front of. So uh, don't be lazy. Fill out the entire form. Uh, but uh, that's really uh, the most efficient way to do it. Your your songs and music uh, will get out in front of everyone and we can we can see everything coming up. I love it. Um, so closing out, are there any pieces of, or is there a piece of parting advice, parting wisdom, anything you'd like to leave with, with our uh, listeners? It's a business, you know, uh, it work to be profitable, you know, it's uh, work to have fun, uh, and uh, understand you're building a business. It's great. Well, John, thank you so much for being here with us on the Made It in Music podcast. It's my pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. Hey, what's up? Thanks for hanging out on this YouTube video with us. In case you didn't know, this is from the Made It Music Podcast Season 2. We have a ton of awesome guests that come on the show, all music business professionals, to share their knowledge and experience with you. So if you want to subscribe to not miss any future episodes, hit that subscribe button on YouTube and you'll be notified about all of them. And in case you didn't know, we do a deep dive for every episode where we go really in-depth on a certain topic from each podcast episode. So sign up right here to get free, unlimited access to all of those deep dives from our podcast. And if you want to watch another Made It in Music podcast video, click here.